Welcome back everyone, let's play World of Waves 2 as Austria-Hungary, episode number 4, and in the middle of this battle, which has gone exceptionally well for us so far, that's not to say that things can't go bad in a hurry. We'll hope that that doesn't end up happening. One of the interesting things that happens in World of Waves when you reload in is I think everything's recalculated, including chances to spot people. Maybe this has been changed, but I don't think so. In any case, uh, I know that we've landed. I, it's been a couple days. It's, you know, I do these recordings when I get a chance. With the for those of you who don't know, I actually have a a new young addition to the family, which uh, messes with the recording schedule a little bit. Anyway, uh, when I have the time, we can squeeze these in. That's when I do them. Things are looking really good, though. So we put a few torpedoes into the battleships, and we haven't even brought our battleships into the main fight. Uh, lots of good roleplay so far. Let me just start advancing a couple minutes at least get the... Ooh, got some battle sounds going on. Uh, at least get the... Uh, all Everything, you know, you run one minute and then you you know what things... What's actually happening. So don't, let's not be mistaken about the fact that Italian destroyers are just as likely to have torpedoes as I... Wow, they have three center line, which is not that bad of a rate of fire. They have a rate of fighter penalty for that, but... Rate of fire. I don't, I'm actually thinking I probably should do something more like that myself. Since rate of fire doesn't usually end up affecting things very much uh, in the very beginning of the game, since destroyers just can't do anything anyway. So it, it really doesn't matter. In fact, sometimes I'm even fine with just using, uh, yeah, I'm happy to use uh, even one gun on the destroyers. It's a single forward gun. Uh, which allows you to have three other centerline torpedoes because you can't have more than four centerline objects without incurring a penalty. Anyway, we're looking good here. I suspect that we won't be able to launch with the destroyers, B-25 and all that, at the nearby battleship because of, well, the torpedoes being expended. But I also thought, okay, no solution, that also makes sense. Um, but I also thought it would also it'd be a matter of not being able to hit them because... Oh, you might actually have a shot. Friendlies in line of fire, and that is not at all the case. Okay, fantastic. And we have one other torpedo, which we can fire the next turn. That's the Sikitsvar. Yeah, anyways, uh, lots of interesting role playing already happening. No need to do that, by the way. I mean, it's fun. We all like to get into it. And I'll try to comment on it as I, you know, in the various things that I see. Okay, so, so far... We had a chance, we've hit a few of these. I unfortunately now do not remember which one. We'll just call this the Admiral in charge being confused. And this is good because there would be a lot of confusion in these kind of battles. Uh, getting some good hits down on the Benedetto Brin class down here. She obviously is more than a match for our light cruisers, but as I mentioned, with lots of high explosives pumping in, if we can light her on fire, that's almost as effective a mechanism of killing her as landing a torpedo shot, which, speaking of landing a torpedo shots, it looks like the Benedetto Brin has dodged our torpedo, but it looks like she's also moving very close to the Cronenberg, who... Do you have any torpedoes left? You have a starboard mount, and that's it. So we have one more torpedo we can launch with the Cronenberg, at least from this side. We'll attempt to do that. I think that our British... Or sorry, German destroyers need to make a run north. Like the, They will be better served making that run. We'll split up this Fauna and the Hamel, the two divisions. Um, both of them we want to head southward. I uh, have to watch out for these two Italian t destroyers because, you know, turnaround is fair play. We don't want to be hit. Uh, I feel like this is just going a little bit fast. Let me try to do turns a little bit more often, but at slow speed because the actual things happening within one minute I'm looking at only the end state, but actually finding the middle state, the, the middle ground, what's actually happening in the middle there, seems really important to me. Uh, now, can we get you guys? I don't... Uh, it's frustrating when you can't get them. So, we need to go a little bit further here. I think these orders look good. Yeah, that looks good. This should be a good attempt for torpedoes. Yes, and actually I prefer low speed torpedoes. They probably have a less chance of hitting as far as like maneuvering if the Benedetto Brin maneuvers at all or anything like that, but um, I feel like a lot of the high speed torpedoes are just going to miss short. Now these low speed torpedoes move at like 15 knots, so they are incredibly slow. But that said, I mean, it's still 
Wait, Kornberg might actually have a chance here as well. Now, I doubt this is a good solution. Yeah, out of arc. So I imagine the torpedoes would have to fire really far north. Now these are swivel mounts, so we will have a better opportunity. We just need to close in a little bit. So we'll try to do that. Oh, it looks like the Benedetto has decided to try to run the blockade, so to speak. <laughs> I really wish she had run the blockade against the, uh, the Germans. That's a lot of smoke. Is she on fire? No, unfortunately. But we'll see if we can put a torpedo into her. Do have, should have a couple opportunities here. Fire. And the good news about the other, the light cruisers is that they have reloading torpedoes. The submerged mounts, you can actually reload up to three. So reload twice for up to three launches. Okay, we'll pull away. We'll get the Germans to pursue south. If we get one hit, then I'll pull the light cruisers, the Austrian light cruisers off the fight, out of the fight entirely, since that'll be, basically it'll be mission accomplished. Now let's go with our German destroyers and pursue the enemy. So far, the only casualty in this battle has been, she's not even sinking yet, the Viana Kafijas. Coffee house, I get it. <laughs> Viana Coffee House. Uh, Opera House? Was that the end? I don't know. Uh, now you have no speed anyway, so that's fine. You'll just sit here and attempt to recover. You aren't flooding right now. There's no flooding, so that this is a functional destroyer and will not be destroyed, will not be sunk if it just stays motionless there. It's unfortunately also a very good candidate for some kind of return fire, any kind of return fire. So, I mean, any kind of incoming fire. We'll see what happens. Now, the Struvelpeter, I, I guess this is Struvelpeter, Struvelpeter. Uh, anyways, I, I don't know how to say, you know, we already went through this, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to get the pronunciations quite right, but it's fine. So we'll shift over and pursue her new direction. Uh, looks like that slow one is still inbound, and this is definitely a good angle for the Kronenberg. Suspect that she'll have something good. Just get, you know, all we need to do is hit with one out of every three torpedoes or so. If we can even get that lucky. And we'll be in really good shape. So, let's see what happens. Anyways, our light, our battleships are now closing in on the Italian battleships. Who look to be, you know, we can report this from a PR perspective. That they are fleeing from the superior Austro-Hungarian Navy. That's how I'd like to coin it for the newspapers at least. Yeah, we all, <laughs> surprisingly, I think this is one of the ones that took a, a hit. We have our heavy cruisers, sorry, armored cruisers. Don't call me a heavy cruiser, I'm an armored cruiser. These are armored cruisers, and they are actually very capable at, um, with 11-inch guns, I mean, these are very capable combat vessels, especially three of them against one battleship. I would give us pretty good odds. It looks like the first heavy guns exchange most unfortunately went against us. So the first hit was landed by the Italians against the uh, Savannah here. It's a pass through superstructure hit though, or a pass through, no, not superstructure, but just pass through hit, which means that it was armor piercing, but it went all the way through. Must have hit somewhere on our, our belt extended, you know, our very, very light belt extended. You may criticize it, but now it ended up being a fantastic thing. <laughs> we didn't uh, end up getting a, an explosion of that shell. It just went right through, which is not too bad for us. Okay. Uh, the Sigitsvar has been taking a few hits here. It looks like their maneuvering means that both of those torpedoes will miss. However, the Sigitsvar should have... Wait, no, she already launched... Did she? No? Wow. Well, <laughs> that is certainly something. We'll fire that, but that one seems very unlikely to hit, you know. And I will just keep you on the course here. We want Cronenberg to be able to turn and, and deal with the Benedetto now. This looks like an absolute, I don't, I thought these guys were on, oh, they're on line ahead. I was mistaken. I was pretty sure that these were actually a uh, in line abreast, turned together formation, but they are, in fact, not in that formation. The lead destroyer is only going 15 knots. Well, we'll let's change this. Let's detach V25, the first vessel that we're attaching like this. Um, I'll keep her under AI control just for a little bit, and we'll get the... Uh, so there's another vessel somewhere in this list which can only make 19 knots, but so long as it isn't S23 herself and it is not, then I don't, I don't care. We'll figure out she'll fall out of position eventually and we'll, we'll have her detach as well. 
But yeah, we want to hunt down whichever one of these has already taken a torpedo hit. I think it's the one to the far east, and we also have this other Leonardo da Vinci. Didn't she take a hit? I'm not sure, but I think so. Yeah, okay. Oh yes, we finally did it. Oh, wonderful. So that was wonderful. That was the Cronenberg's, I, it didn't look like it, it looked like it was gonna miss. That was the Cronenberg's uh, first torpedo. Uh, it looked like it was gonna miss because it was so far ahead, but I forgot that these torpedoes are going extremely slow. We actually got a hit on that one. That may already be a dead battleship, but we want to, of course, follow up. I might actually just let the Sigitsvar attack the turbines over here. Kind of a funny class. I think that was the class from the... <clears throat> I mean, turbine, wasn't that the HMS turbine was the first, uh, like, turbine-based engine or whatever? But maybe turbine is, is something in uh, Italian which would translate to, like, fast boat or something, or like quick or something like that. I don't know. Actually, I mean, I know Spanish pretty well, and I don't know what that would what that would be referring to besides turbine, so it's a mystery. But for the moment, we're, we're doing really good. I mean, another every battleship hit with a torpedo is fantastic. So try to keep track of everything. Armor cruisers are on an intercept course, going really slow. Let's have them pick up to 16 knots just because the speed acceleration is very slow. I noticed that we have some destroyers here. What the heck are they doing? They are damaged and they have all their torpedoes. Okay, we'll get back into the fight. I don't know what you're doing, but now you we're requesting you on the front lines. Okay, so she has turned. Cronenberg is gonna need to really pick up the pace in order to get ahead of her. But we also have the battleships here. I mean the destroyers, German destroyers chasing the battleships. And our battleships have to be careful about their torpedoes, because I'm assuming that these battleships also have submerged torpedoes, and they do. So that's something we have to be careful about. We prefer to get close and just, you know, shell back and forth, even with the six-inch guns. That's why you want as many six-inch guns as possible. Those are pretty deadly early on. Okay, let's see how everything develops. I'm trying to, like, glance my eyes in a swinging motion through all of it, which is, you know, all an admiral would be able to do at this point, try to process the... The information coming from the radio, or well, I guess the flagging, or I'm not even sure how they would do it. All right, out of arc, but I think we're in a good position to get an arc. We just stay stay the course here. Our light cruisers are pushing their destroyers away, which is exactly according to plan. I guess I'm going to have to t put V25 as not independent and just really intentionally pull her away. So that we don't get uh, okay. Now they have swung. This is uh, this is interesting. They've swung east. So that means I Savannah and Yugoslavia are going to be isolated. Hamel and the her uh, Kaiser Franz Joseph, Ruter, Schildkrotenkraft. These uh, all these vessels are going to have to move east as well. But they're pointing in the wrong direction. Turning is not quick. It's going to be a little bit problematic. Uh oh. Whoops, sometimes you think you selected one and you didn't. Okay, yeah, pursue, pursue, pursue is the order of the day. This is really interesting. These battleships are not going at all in the right, I mean, they're all going in weird directions. Okay, so anyways, we're landing more hits against one of these. This is one that I think already had the torpedo hit, has the non-functioning forward turret. So Hummel might not have to make such a tight turn. Okay, B-25 moving south. She has no torpedoes left anyways. She's basically cannon fodder. We'll probably take her over to the Vienna Coffee House in an attempt, in an, a wild attempt to save the Coffee House, sacrifice the B-25. Again, that's a German destroyer. Admiral Torchicholi does not care about the German. Look at I just, you didn't hear it from me, but somebody let slip that He's happy to sacrifice their destroyers. I mean, look, I'm happy to sacrifice Austro-Hungarian destroyers. So when it comes to a nation's destroyers that isn't my own, <laughs> I'd almost prefer for them to die. I, I might actually prefer. You know, eventually, I, who knows, we'll be, we are allies now, but how long will we be allies with the, with the Germans? I've read my history books. I know how World War I goes. Okay, another minute here. 
a little bit slow on the action just because I feel like things are kind of at a critical juncture. I kind of sworn that was going to be it, but nope, not quite. Just a little bit further ahead. And this is really nice. The Cronenberg is getting blasted, I think, but if we can just... Yeah, with the swivel mounts being out of... Wait, do we have torpedoes? Yeah, we have one port torpedo. That's all I wanted. It's just that that's the one. It's got the Benedetto Brin's name on it. I think we'll, yeah, we might even be really aggressive with this angling here. So she has been hit, obviously. She's down to 16 knots. Good, good zoning by the Sigetsvar. And our, our armor cruisers have actually now started to target the Benedetto Brin. If nothing else, we can call this all good training, good target practice for them. Going to pursue the Leonardo da Vinci and the other Benedetto Brin, the one that was hit by a torpedo. Going to relegate to a slightly lower priority. Okay, so let's see what we what happens here. Now, Benedetto Brin did turn north. This is not actually that good. I, I guess we could get lucky, but they're going to be turning wildly. So we have to hope that they are not able to turn faster than our torpedo can get there. And then I'll have the Cronenberg continue the course up here while V25 starts shadowing that Benedetto to Brin, especially if it takes another torpedo. Yugoslavia and Savannah are in very good position to, to brawl with the Italian battleships. And we'll hopefully line up Hommel and all the rest of them to be able to brawl as well. We have the destroyers very close by. In fact, if, uh, if these battleships are not interested in brawling, what they're going to face is the wrath of the destroyers, which is fine by me. I mean, that's how we've had all our success so far. Still not sure what these guys are doing or when they're going to come to their senses, but this just happens sometimes. Okay, good. We're pushing the Benedetto Brin back up. And it looks like this one's not interested in an engagement with our armored cruisers. Probably smart. And uh, here, <laughs> off to the side, make sure we didn't miss anyone else. We have some destroyers coming back into the fight. All right, another minute. Oh my gosh, we did it. All right, that is that is fantastic. And it says Cronenberg is launching torpedoes, but I think that was the last turn. She has no more torpedoes launched, so it must have been last turn. I thought, I, I thought that announcement happens the turn before. I mean, like, it should have happened... Oh, it launched torpedoes because I manually commanded it to. Okay, but this Benedetto Brin is in serious trouble. Because if I'm not mistaken, they've taken two torpedoes. Now, we're reporting these, and there is a certain amount of fog of war. I don't know how much fog of war there would be. It's already daytime, right? Oh, it's still twilight, so we don't have full visibility yet. Yeah, these these um, reports may not be perfectly accurate. You would think you would see a loud, I mean, not loud, but a huge plume of water when you hit with a torpedo. <laughs> it should be pretty obvious if there's any kind of light, whether or not you hit them, but... Um, it's possible that one of those was a dud is what I was trying to get at. It's possible. We don't know. This looks horrible for the Leonardo da Vinci, but great for us. Our poor Austro-Hungarian, you know, light cruiser down here is just taking the brunt of it. The thing is, even pulling away doesn't save us because I imagine the Benedetto Brin, the Italians, are going to prefer the side with two light cruisers to that with four. They have a better chance of escaping if they put pressure on our our light cruisers. They aren't that intelligent, obviously. They're not like analyzing, oh, will this one break or not? But yeah, they might want to be going at that direction just because there's less uh, less ships in that direction. Easier chance to break. Now, this looks very good, though. Let's see who can target. Okay, we'll take it. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Crossfire! We're getting some crossfire. I doubt any other torpedoes, I mean destroyers, are going to be available. So let's do a slight turn to starboard. Uh, I don't, they might curve back to the east, but and we'll actually make it a slightly, hard, not just a slight turn to starboard, but even a, a hard turn south because we have a chance, this one's already been hit, so we can you know, run that one through the gauntlet of destroyers as well. Okay, then steady as she goes, we'll have the Hommel actually pursue this Benedetto Brin. 
and then we'll zoom out a little bit so we can see what's going on. Yeah, we're still landing some hits. I mean, these two are exchanging fire. The Archduke Sixtus, by the way, I, I should rename this. Of course, there's Archduke has a specific name in, in Austrian, so it should probably not be Archduke, but it's... Is Graf Duke? I can't remember. I mean, obviously, I don't speak German. How would I know? But there's a... I'm trying to think. I, I should know this just because you get these titles. I don't think Graf is. I think it's a... Uh, it's not coming to me. If I had a multiple choice list, I'd probably get it right. Who cares? Uh, I'll, I'll change it when I remember what the name is so that we're uh, dealing with the Austro-Hungarian name. Oh, so the first one missed, but there's two more inbound. Hell is not taking fire. That's much better. And we're going to have to pursue this one. Oh my gosh, the Leonardo da Vinci was hit by one of those. Amazing. And it looks like the Benedetto Brin here just clobbered the S23. Which may still be able to get the torpedoes off. No, she has no more torpedoes. Okay, well, we'll move on to the next one. We'll detach her. Okay. You are going to go this way and fall off the line. Okay, I had to take a brief cut there, but hey, it's a great thing to come back to a battle that you are winning. And although I, uh, there's been these several disconnects in my train of thought. Oh wow, and this is a good this is a good start. I really, really, really want to pull. The Austro-Hungarian, oh, D24 is going down. Where is D24? Oh my goodness. So I, I missed an opportunity here, for sure. I, I'm sure that I had an opportunity. And in fact, we do maybe still have an opportunity. G11, who just was hit. Yep, can fire. That doesn't look very promising, frankly. Uh, you might actually have the opportunity to fire as well. Sometimes... They are close enough, but nope, they aren't. So we, I mean, we have such a, like a glowing, an amazing victory in the in the making here. So my main goal is gonna be just try to get as many of my ships out of there alive as possible. What the heck is going on here? If only we had a torpedo. In fact, I think at this point, this is a little bit of a bizarre decision, but those Excuse me, real fast. I think we're going to give the Germans a lot of credit here. We're going to allow them the noble sacrifice, the the trip to Valhalla, of ramming their ship into the into the Italian ship, which will buy us time for. Uh, I mean, actually, I'm not even sure we'll be able to launch torpedoes just because when they do that, usually, if you try to launch torpedoes, it'll say friendly ship in line of fire. But that, that's the idea. We're going to try to do something like that. I think we're going to let the Austro-Hungarian light cruisers here limp away, and we'll let the uh, German light cruisers pursue. We should have the speed to pursue, and we really don't care what happens with the Germans one. So, this is what I was a little worried about, though, is the turbine and all her. I mean, the two turbines moving back in towards my other ships. I think that they're just trying to go back to escort duty, but the closer they get to my heavy ships, the less I like it. So we'll turn, and they actually turned away, so we're, we're looking better over there now. Oh my gosh. So let me try to do this. Just one last hurrah here. Because <clears throat> I think we'll be able to get uh, the Struvelpeter, or Struvelpeter. It's um, Straw Peter, I guess. Anyway, I, I don't know. That's That may not be true. <laughs> Just make up things and then tell people it's true. But it's the internet. Nobody lies. Yeah, D and D24 looks like she did miss her opportunity to fire. She's no longer going to have that opportunity. Um, don't think we need to harass these ships even that much. We we just done such a great job on the destroyer side of things that we can be a little. Uh, I think we're much to the crew. I mean the virtual crew, but I mean the, even the people who are role playing as the crew in the comment section. Much to all of their disappointment, I think we're going to be very conservative with the battleships in this fight. 
But I have to say, I'm like, I'm really liking the performance here. This is going to be uh, obviously just a crippling, crippling blow to the Italians. I, I'm, I doubt, I severely, highly, highly, highly doubt that they're going to be able to walk away from this. I mean, the war should basically be over as of the end of this fight. So we'll we'll continue to move out of the way. We have other ships that can engage. We're going to let them do that. Um, I know that these guys haven't gotten into the fight yet, but yeah, still I'm not. What? Okay. Okay, that's fine. I mean, we could get very unlucky and get some catastrophic, catastrophically bad event happen, which we would definitely not like. Like one of our ships being hit by a torpedo, especially one of our battleships. So from that perspective, I guess we should stay a little conservative. Yeah, we'll pursue this, but we'll let these guys limp away. We can even return them to line ahead formation. Oh, they're going to have a chance here. Uh, we're still hitting the, the turbine, which is fantastic. Oh, and this one who has, if I'm not mistaken, been hit by two, dis no, wait. Who's been hit by what? You've been hit by two torpedoes, I think, and you have been hit by none. Uh, it's, it's hard to keep track of who's been hit by what. Okay, still looks good. Oh, that's this is looking good. I have a hard time focusing on anything but these guys. Oh uh, yeah, we're we're still out of the firing arc. I will move at that angle still, even though it's not necessarily setting us up well for the next turn. I just want the let's let the Germans take a little bit of the fight for for a short amount of time. Looks like the Sigurd's fire is gonna have another chance at this battleship. What is your situation? Port side torpedoes are reloading. We have one starboard side torpedo available, which means we need to start angling up. Not that I really think we need to hit any with any more torpedoes, and if it comes at the cost of light cruiser, there's some risk minimization going on here. <laughs> oh, there goes D24 just out. She's down. And that is supposed to be the transition from being above the water to being below, so she sank very quickly. Now this has got to be, got to be, a good angle. That looks really good. And that's what we've been waiting for, right? The whole time we've just been waiting for the opportunity where uh, we can launch our torpedoes. That's the, the moment we've been waiting for. I'm going to still head on this line because I want to try to get as much speed as I can. Um, how are we doing over here? So we're engaging that one, which is medium damage. I guess she's been hit by a torpedo. You've been hit by a torpedo. Both of those are actually lacking a turret as well. We need to curl you back in. Question, uh, I know that the Benedetto Bryn here is going to make a hard turn to her port to the west. I think we can actually try to predict that and move a little bit closer. Switch targets. Okay, we did manage to hit this one, which is a critical moment. And you only have one torpedo each, so that's very unfortunate. I think we'll stay the course here, keep the trajectory more or less the same. The heading, I should say. I doubt the Amazone or ha Amazona. I doubt she's gonna have a shot. Yeah, she's lagging. I mean, you have to be, you have to lead the ship. That's a very good hit, by the way. I mean, we should be very happy about that. But what is our torpedo status? Port side was destroyed. One is available. One starboard. Yeah, one. So we have one and one for each. Wow, these guys have. Had, they've been through the. They have been through it. We have guns down, torpedo tubes destroyed, all kinds of stuff. Plenty of repairs needed for the the battle at, at the battle's end. Let's keep moving. 
Oh, wow. So we actually landed a anything, <laughs> any kind of hit on one of the Italians. So you can see the gunfire is just horribly inaccurate. Not only that, but it's uh, pretty ineffective as well. You don't get too much damage out of it. We need you guys to move with those as quickly as possible. And the Sigurd Svar is actually taking a hit here. She has lined up nicely her starboard torpedo though. Let's see if this might be the right angle for, yeah, it is. Well, we'll try to get lucky with that. We're unfortunately in the perfect torpedo launch zone for the turbines. We need to make some serious corrective maneuvers. And I think we'll turn back east and then that was certainly enough to dodge any torpedoes that were coming our way. And then we'll move east and try to avoid the turbines from there. Now, what happened with the G11? Still getting hit, but that's fine. We did have a good angle on the Benedetto. It would be a tough thing for her to launch any torpedoes at that kind of an angle. Medusa is getting uh, pummeled here. It looks like the Benedetto Brin is going to risk a torpedo launching session, which is unusual, I would say. <laughs> uh, that's her wake, so maybe the Medusa has a shot. No. Yeah, I didn't, she's moving away. I mean, she's probably moving faster than our torpedoes could go. Fair enough. Well, anyways, we can bring the armored cruisers in. All of these battleships of the Italians have been battered, battered, battle-worn. So we should we should be able to uh, at least harass them. We got up to 16 knots here. Yeah, Cronenberg, the Vienna Coffee House, who's actually, unfortunately, just sitting out, out there all by herself. Let's go have the battleships run the cavalry right to the rescue, basically. Have the battleships go help. I mean, if we lose one destroyer in all of this, I, w <laughs> I will obviously not care. It'll be perfectly acceptable. Oh my gosh, we got another. Oh, the Sigitsvar, what a hero. I'm pretty sure I've seen this name Sigitsvar before. I don't know if it's the same person who um, recommended it for the German series, but boy, this ship has come up and it has come up big. Wow, so many torpedoes landing. This is this is definitely this is not at all how these things normally go. Should make that very clear. You normally do not get like eight, ten, whatever. I mean, eight torpedo hits so far. I'm guessing that is. Way more than you would expect to get. Way more. Uh, missed opportunity last time I should have been launching against this one. But I'm going to have the Germans continue to pursue. And I'm going to tag the light cruisers out. And the armored cruisers in. Uh, similarly, I can tag in these new destroyers that aren't actually that new. They've been hit. And this is a troubling thing. The Benedetto Brin keeps turning in our direction. And that's going to make us a little bit vulnerable to torpedoes. There's two things I could do right now. I could cut left or I could cut right. The idea, you know, definitely not the right move here is to keep moving. I think I'm going to cut further in, which should limit her ability to fire a little bit. We have this kind of ugly mix, mismatching or mixing of the, the fleet. The formations can't do this in real life, <laughs> you know, interweave or they, they wouldn't want to. Uh, even the German, or sorry, even the British during exercises would practice stuff like this and come in you know, have ships ramming each other. Not ideal to do even under good conditions. Definitely not ideal to do under wartime conditions in the chaos of battle. Okay, so, so it's hard. It looks like she'll get out of there. A good handoff between these groups. Still not going to push the armored cruisers. They are very good at pursuit. So what we can, I'd like to continue to use them in that exact manner as pursuit. Uh, so I don't I don't want their stokers to be worn out yet. We we have um, big plans for them in the future. Okay, so that seemed to work out okay. No, not the Vienna Coffee House. No. We should get the the other battle the destroyers over there ASAP. Okay, landing some guns against the. What is probably I mean she doesn't have any of her main guns left, so both of her they're grayed out. Both forward and aft turrets disabled for the moment. Not destroyed, which would be if they were painted black. 
A little bit of a mismanagement of the German formation there. Three battleships over here, so this is definitely going to be a priority, but I guess that's why we have our armored cruisers. And... Okay, probably a good time for you guys to get up to speed. Whatever speed you can offer, which is apparently 22 knots. And Cronenberg, you don't have any torpedoes, so you can continue to limp off. Limp out of the battle, back to home. You guys go save the Vienna Coffee House. Okay, landing some hits against this one. I assume it's this one up here. It is. And she's under a lot of fire. And she hopefully will be moving into the mouth of our new trap. Good question here is, do I want this Svana and Yugoslavia to pull off to the east to finish her off? I think that their whole formation is going to start moving southwest, which is, by the way, towards the Italian ports. I, it's good to actually zoom out every now and then remember where you are. <laughs> we are in the Adriatic, so the Italians moving to the southwest could be, I mean, probably is a retreat to port. I do want to stop them from being able to make it there. So yeah, in that case, I guess we will push on to the southwest uh, just to harass the Italian ships for as long as possible, knowing that they have, a lot, many of them have taken torpedo damage. And we want to make that, you know, doubly bad for them by forcing them to retreat at high speed so that they take on increased flooding. No, Vienna Coffee House, no. Okay, she has one flooding, which is definitely not good. However... I think we might be able to get in front of her. We still, there's still chance. Okay, I was really hoping that we would not see another hit on her because I would probably sink her. And we didn't. This group can go down to cruise. We can also use these guys. Yeah, look at this. They've, the, <laughs> this battleship went up to the north. She might just be going off onto her own corner to die. Since I think it's pretty clear at this point she's um, she's cut off and the chances of her survivor are low because she's taken I, I think that she's taken two torpedoes already, but I'm having a hard time remembering which ones have taken How many torpedoes? Okay, so the first German vessel is going down or is that the second? the second and No Austrian blood has been spilled yet, which is not true. Of course, we've taken casualties on those ships that have taken hits but no ships have been lost at least the Germans, oh yeah, this guy's limping. This is a. This is exactly what you want your destroyers for. Really, you want your destroyers for everything all the time, <laughs> if you're me. So we can use them first as an aggressive, in an aggressive, cheap, you know, it's like, they're like torpedo boats. They go in and you can potentially get really high kills. Um, but then after the, the, they can also act as like hyenas, vultures, picking on scavenging from the, the wounded. And by scavenging, I mean just finishing them off with torpedoes. So that's really good for the destroyers. Um, honestly, you can do that with, excuse me, uh, you can do that with your battleships as well. Because uh, if your battleships haven't taken damage, you can just uh, shoot them to death. But it takes a long time to shoot them to death in the early war, early game. So this one off does not look good for them. They're slowing down to, yeah, this one has actually sunk. Three knots there just is an indication that She's actually sinking, which is kind of like a, it's a gamey thing. You can right click and actually find that out. You're not supposed to be able to find that out. They actually hid that at some point, but they didn't hide it all the way. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure Frederick has been made aware of it. Frederick being the sole developer on the game, but he has not, uh, he has not fixed it, thank thankfully. So we have still have access to the information about when a ship is sinking or not. But it's nice to kind of not do that sometimes so that you can remember that Oh, we finally have control back. Fantastic. It's nice to remember that, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't have access to that information in real life. Obviously, you would not know. Are they sinking? Are they not? And that's why you would overkill some ships. You would underkill some. You know, let them go without put, putting enough in them to sink them. And this still happens with me all the time. Okay, so how are we doing up here? Are we sending these two up here? These destroyers are actually, in my head, destined for this, which is still quite alive. We have the Leonardo here, which I'm thinking is going to be going down, but let's go ahead and make the more aggressive action here. 
Yeah, she knows what's happening. She can see the. She's like, you know, it's like the wounded gazelle who's broken off from the herd. She knows her fate, but she's still gonna fight to the last. Let's get even closer before we launch. But even our battleships are starting to pick at her. Probably, probably because of her slow speed. When they're slower, they're easier to hit. Okay. I mean, let, I'm not. I don't plan to show any mercy here. If we can get all of these killed, we will. Out of arc. Okay. I like to fire multiple at the same time, just because you know then you got higher chances of hitting. But we'll continue to close there. The German destroyers will be sent to continue harassing all the way, just because they are expendable. Wow. To think that she has three destroyers right next to her, and she's focusing her fire on my Austro-Hungarian destroyers way off to her other side. Definitely not even an imminent threat. Now, this is definitely much more of an imminent threat. We'll keep pushing at whatever max speed we can make here. Okay, so we already hit the Leonardo da Vinci with another torpedo. Did G11 already launch? I think she kind of twisted. Oh, she's dead stopped. Something about me tells me that's not going to be a hit. So let's just curve up and then have G11 launch next turn instead. Oh, she's actually dead in the water. Okay, let's forget about her. She's a, she's a goner. This one is still interesting to me. I'm going to have the light cruisers to keep track of them. Um, even the Cronenberg just to keep eyes on her. Yeah, otherwise the Svana and Yukoslava, yeah, our, our groups are charging after the retreating ones. We can probably swing over here and try to take some shots at that one. This one is not in good shape. She's sinking. So we'll make sure to focus fire on this other one. In fact, let me actually give a manual order to target. Yeah. Let's prioritize her. Hommel has been hit. First, all right, well, whole hit, but no star means no penetration. It's a good thing. So some damage dealt, but luckily we're still okay. Guessing that she's going down. Did we maintain one torpedo? Yeah, we do. We only have one torpedo of the three, but that's, if we can land it, that would be still something. So while these destroyers chase this one, she has heavy damage. Again, we could just force them to kind of run until their own death, since they will sink eventually if they have uh, flooding, and we keep pushing them at high speeds. It's, I mean, most it's not a 100% guarantee, but there's a good chance uh, that they'll, they'll just keep incurring the high speed increases flooding or bulkheads rupturing. These are all real events um, for the ship event, like the ship... Moving at high speed, it's already taking damage. So, uh, yeah, limiting flooding. That's us. But I, yeah, when you see a destroyer this early on, limiting flooding, she has flooding of six, and flotation's only halfway gone. But if I was the captain, I would be giving the order to abandon ship. Let's just put it that way. I don't think she's gonna make it. She's up to a speed of. She's down to a speed of twelve. Let's actually just pull her off. She's kind of useless. Uh, I mean, she's not going to be able to, at 12 knots, she's not going to be able to catch the battleship. I don't think that it matters. Yeah, okay. Anyways, we'll keep pushing here. Now we can get into a better cadence, kind of moving more. Paused a little too often there. Oh, oh man. So just on a, in a single hit. Well, of course, this can happen. Only one six inch gun was enough to bring her from, I didn't think she was even that damaged, but she's gone from, maybe it was like a third damage or something. She's gone from taking a little bit of damage to, yep, that was two hits. She was sunk in two hits, literally two hits. <laughs> There's, this fight is going to be two hits. Me hitting you, you hitting the ground. And that's what happened. Ship sinking after two six inch shells. Can you imagine? <laughs> These these destroyers are tiny. Now sinking one after two hits that's a that's a pretty unlucky event for us. The first one was the engine room, so that didn't help. 
that whole aft one, I'm, yeah, I'm a little surprised to see that. All right, so we're going to be wasting a lot of ammunition against this uh, sinking battleship. So much so that I'm going to just pause fire for 10 minutes while we roll by her. In the meantime, I've completely forgot about the German light cruisers here, slowly making ground up. Okay, let's go to squad max now that they've probably burned out a lot of their stokers and all that. So, Sigisvar's still in the fight here. A real trooper. Yeah, we do not want you guys firing either for 10 more minutes. Might have to disable firing for even longer than that for the, the group of three. So this one must have taken a torpedo. I believe this is one of them that has. She seems like maybe she's a little bit slow. I do like having these light cruisers um, in the fight like this. Just kind of <laughs> battle sponges, absorbing damage. And the light, even the destroyers chasing after the battleships, knowing that the most important uh, destroyer is in the rear. So we don't have to worry about um, the first two getting hit and destroyed, since the, the rear one is the one that carries the, the ever so precious torpedo. But we should be good here. Oh, I, I've neglected. Yes, I have neglected you, haven't I? Yes, I have. Good thing I still have eyes on her. Oh, Cronenberg, you're not the one I want. You guys pursue. Okay, so we have that action going on up here. Pursuit. And this action going down here. A Medusa's still landing hits. I mean, these Germans are still doing... And actually, it looks like they've sent their destroyers on a torpedo assault of our battleships, maybe? Uh, we will cautiously pull back from that. I doubt very much they're going to get there, especially with our light cruisers right in the way. AH Division 7? Okay, that's the Sigitsvar. She's, uh, I trust her so much that her misunderstanding of the orders is probably to her advantage, or our advantage somehow. We have to just trust her. Okay, V5 is now sinking. That's the first of them, but we have more. There's more where they came from. Honestly, you really ought to have assigned somebody else. <laughs> so G11, let's just get this one going this way. Um, I would prefer G11 not to be the lead ship, but whatever. I mean, we're still pushing. We're still forcing this battleship to move probably faster than it wants to. All right, Sigisvar, you have a real purpose now. Loop back and take care of these destroyers. They are going in hardcore. Even this battleship was doing something there. Now, that was a turn away, which is usually indicative of them launching torpedoes, but the range, which their range could be larger than the blue if they've had some upgrades. Um, but I'm actually pretty confident that that is not the case. Oh, looks like G11 with her flown torpedo might also be pretty soon. Joining uh, the others, the other German destroyers, which are slowly disappearing below the, below the waves at this point. Okay, so as far as got to loop back, she still hasn't responded based on her orders, <clears throat> so she's still confused. Okay, fair enough. How are things going over here? We are slowly chasing her down. That's good. Now, do you have any torpedoes? You do. You have two. And one flooding. All right, look, it doesn't look like you're going to make it. You have no speed. Okay, so you can't, you cannot come and help anyway. And you have three torpedoes and 91% damage and six flooding. You're probably not going to make it either. Let's send you north. Again, we want to send them north and see if we can get... Yeah, this one's not sinking yet, but I think one more torpedo will change that. Oh, wow, we're starting to land the big guns now, and on the appropriate target. Perfect. Well, it looks like this Benedetto Brin is trying to run the blockade again. See who has an opportunity to fire at her. That's good. Uh, we want to fire more than that, actually, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, two crossing is perfect. If we can get the Gila or Hela to also 
fire, that would be... Oh yeah, she's lagging behind, so no, not her. <clears throat> but, you know, that's a good, solid start. Not looking that good, but that's okay. All of this is still a distraction from them attacking the ships I really don't want them to attack, and I'm just kind of saving... Let's have these guys just hold fire in general. Let's have them conserve ammunition. Uh, Sigurd's fire is still not responding. But again, we trust her. Oh, man. Okay, Medusa has taken some damage here. <laughs> Both those torpedoes missed. That's okay. We'll come back around with the port side. And the Gila's like, no, let me back into my formation. Uh, this is pretty interesting because we are about to cross the T of the Benedetto Brin. Which could be good for torpedoes. <clears throat> okay, well we are landing some hits on different on different ships, but Medusa, can you launch? Possible. Yeah, we actually can. Well we'll launch that, but we'll also continue to pursue. And Gefion might be able to launch now. She might not be able to, because friendly ships in line of fire. Oh, my port side is ex oh no, out of arc. Okay, port side is fine. Mm. Okay, Amazon, this is perfect opportunity for you. And it is. Good. Launch and peel. I think Amazon just got hit or something because she's pulling off. Oh, that was really close. Medusa? I know that these submerged mounts are... Oh, we already launched. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's just give them hell. This is what we're here for. Shake things up. Oh, dear. We lost that one. So we didn't zoom in and watch, but looks like all of our torpedoes missed. Um, nonetheless, we've bought some time for the Savannah and Yugoslavia to move into position. And in fact, there's no other battleships ahead of us at this point. But this has been a 53-minute fight. So we'll definitely call this video to a close here and conclude this battle probably pretty quickly in the next beginning of the next episode. I'll probably start running at continuous time. I don't mind taking these battles slow, and I generally will, so if that's not your cup of tea, you might be better off watching someone else play Rule of Waves. Is that a joke? Maybe. But otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll catch you back for the next one. And until then, stay safe and take care.